In this video, I'm going to show you how to create tables in a responsive design project. Okay, let's get started here. So I have a slide in my current project that I needed to put a table on. And of course, there is a built-in interaction for Adobe Captivate 9. And my instinct, of course, was to go with the easiest, the path of least resistance, the easiest choice, is always to go with uh, some kind of widget or interaction. So you can select that interaction by clicking the interaction drop-down icon and going down to learning interactions. And we'll just uh, wait for that to come up on the screen here. Sometimes the first time you do something in Captivate, you'll get a bit of a delay. There we are. So let's just scroll down a little bit until we see the table interaction. There it is. And I'm just going to insert that onto my page here. And uh, what I'm looking for is uh, four columns. So I'm just going to insert an extra column there. And the title of the first one is going to be called Subject. And this is for a... Uh, um, a, a grammar course actually. So we'll just put in uh, will and shall and we're talking specifically about verbs in this particular course. And the, th the fourth column, while it'll be there, there won't actually be a title. And I'll fill in the rest later, but I just wanted to give you an idea here. So we've got, uh, well we're actually going to do uh, there should be six rows. So let's make sure that's there. We'll click on OK. Of course, you could also customize the font, the style, colors, and things like that. And this will throw the widget right on your screen here. And I think we're probably going to want to resize this. So I'm just going to posi position this on my page. And something like that looks good. Now, of course, when you've stretched it out like this, it's not quite desirable, so you're going to want to press the uh, refresh widget just to give you a better preview here. So that looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the uh, the other uh, breakpoints on the responsive design. Looks okay, looks okay. Let's do a preview, and we'll just do next five slides so that we can see just this particular slide. So that's not exactly desirable. As you can see here, um, I'm ending up with scroll bars. And if I choose the different breakpoints, it's really not quite what I had in mind. I guess it could work, maybe. Let's just play with the scroll bars a little bit here. Yeah, I don't think this is really what uh, I had in mind for this particular course. Uh, so let's close that out and we'll just talk for a moment here. The, the widgets are great and when you're in a rush and you just need a, a very quick simple uh, learning interaction, uh, some of them are fantastic. I'll, I'll be the first to admit that. But I'm also the kind of person uh, who also is concerned about appearance and want to make sure that things look as good as they possibly can. In this case here, I think I'm going to create my own table using Smart Shapes. So I'm just going to get rid of this here. Now, I've been playing around with Smart Shapes to create tables in a responsive project for the last couple of days here. And I've learned a couple of things and hopefully uh, I can share those with you and, and you can benefit by them as well. So I'm going to start off with uh, one rectangle. And I'm just going to ballpark approximately you know, let's say I'm doing four columns, something around there. And uh, in this case here, I'm going to just make it white, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to make it 100% transparent or 0% uh, opacity, if you will. Uh, I am going to leave the stroke on on this one here. So, but I don't need it two. I just need it one here. Now, my advice, if you're going to make a responsive project, 
is work on the one cell first. Make sure it's perfect. Let's put some text on there. The first column is going to be the subject, as in grammar subject. Of course, that is white. Let's just change that to black. And I'm going to use Arial. Now, because this is a uh, column heading, we're going to make that bold as well. And I'm just going to align this to the top and left align it as well. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of just some small margins here, just on the top, the sides, just to give me the results that I'm looking for here. Now, the thing I would advise is that uh, you're going to have to make some changes on some of the breakpoints, but it's really important to get this right the first time. So let's take a look at the position tab. Uh, the position um, panel, if you will, uh, may not be open by default. If it's not, it should be, but if it's not, you can select it from your window drop-down menu. Um, but let's just go there now. So. Thinking about how you want this to respond as the screen size of the project changes, uh, there might be a few things you might want to decide to do. Um, I think the main thing is that you want to keep the object size uh, height and width to be sort of the same aspect ratio. Um, so instead of choosing auto here, I'm going to go with percentage. Um, and we're going to say that I know the space between my back and, and next buttons is about 80% 80, uh, 80 here, and I need four columns, so I really don't want this to be more than 20%. Let's give myself a little leeway here, and we'll make the width of this cell to be 19. And um, just because I like whole numbers, I'm going to just say 10. And the reason I'm going a little bit larger is that once I get to those smaller sizes, I might need the text to spill down to a second row. So let's make sure that I have that room. So I think that's pretty good, but this is important. Choosing, you know, don't choose an auto height or an auto width. Make sure you have 10%, 19%. And now it's time to duplicate that. So I'm going to hit Control D and I'm going to duplicate this. And placement is important. And it's probably worth it. It does say I'm lined up, but I like to get in there nice and close, you know, and just make sure that I'm truly as lined up as I can be. That's actually where I want it. I want the line to overlap between the two here. So let's just jump back up to fit. And uh, I'm not going to worry about what's in the title yet. I'm going to duplicate this again because, again, I need four columns. So now I have those four columns and again I'm just going to get in nice and close here and make sure that these are aligned exactly because again this is one of those things that once you make a mistake and then duplicate it a bunch of times uh, you, you know you're just going to be committed to uh, a not very nice looking uh, table so that looks pretty good there Again, I'm not going to worry about what the text says right now because I'll change that when I'm done. So now it's time to make additional rows. And we're going to copy. Well, actually, we're going to duplicate again. Again, I could hit Control D as well. And we're just going to eyeball that, but I think I'm just, that's where I want to be. Now, I'm going to take this opportunity to unbold this particular set of, um, of columns or rows, because uh, in the following rows I'm just going to need that. And I actually need six rows underneath the heading here, so we'll just duplicate that again. And you know, this is sort of fidgety little work here, but in the end you'll be happy with the results. I think that's about right there. This time I'm going to duplicate two rows. And again, just 
Try to play with the positioning. Uh, if you spill out of the area, don't worry, I'll show you a trick to get all that back. And I'm just going to do one final duplicate here so that I have all the cells for my table in place here. And again, I'm just nudging using the cursor keys on my keyboard here. And I think that's about right there. So what I can do at this point, I can actually select all of these cells and I can either right click and select group or I can simply type control G. I'm going to select it here for this point here. So now I have a complete table and the great thing about this is that I can resize this table to fit the slide accordingly. You know, and you can play with, uh, with your font settings as well. The thing about fonts, though, of course, now that we've got them here, um, you can select the entire group. And let's say I want to make that 18-point font because uh, I know I'm going to be, you know, shrinking it down a little bit there. Uh, you may have to wait a moment for it to take effect because it's not just making the change to one of your cells. It's making them... Uh, to uh, like four times seven, whatever that is. So, uh, so there we go. It's good to go. Let's take a look at what the other breakpoints look like. Not bad. Not bad. I think here we're going to run into a problem if we have any text that's uh, m you know more than just one word. So at this point, I'm using a 17-point font. So maybe I'll do the same for. For this or maybe just a little bit smaller. We'll go 16 point on this particular breakpoint. I've made the decision to not use a landscape uh, smartphone breakpoint and there's a, a reason for that. I found that uh, with my own experimentation that um, using the landscape uh, cell phone breakpoint uh, I don't get really desirable results. And you can not only uh, turn that off by uh, by not selecting it in the first place or deleting it if you've created it, but there is actually one other thing that you should probably do, just so your users don't have a problem. Go down to Preferences, and under the Category of Project in the Publish Settings section, you'll see a check mark that will disallow phone landscape orientation. And you can even include um, a custom message, if you wish, that will explain to users that uh, portrait is a better choice for their smartphone. Um, let's go back to our table here. So this looks pretty good. Let's take a look at what it looks like on a uh, portrait mobile phone. Again, also pretty good, but my guess is, again, we're not going to have enough room for some of the text that will eventually go here. So again, we're probably going to want to change this to something really small, maybe 10 point, uh, just to make sure that it's going to work across all the different breakpoints there. And uh, that looks pretty good. So let's test this out. We'll, uh, we'll try it starting with uh, desktop mode. And we'll just do a preview, next five slides again. And we'll see how this looks uh, in, in preview mode. So not bad, looks pretty good. Let's uh, let's choose the the actual breakpoints here. Looks good. I like those results. And uh, a little small for my screen, but I get the idea here. And of course, you can also use the slider control and just make sure. And this is particularly important when you have cells that contain uh, more text than than what you might have under normal circumstances. So a uh, great way to see if it's going to work across all those different breakpoints. It looks like it's working really well and uh, hopefully you get the same kind of results that I do. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was entertaining, useful, educational, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.